you know, we're joined in the studio by uh, Jesse. Hey, Jesse, who do we have here? We have a special guest. Yes, I, thanks, Ashta. Joining us now, actually, is a Vancouver Island uh, University me- Digital Media Studies student, uh, Tabitha. Welcome, Tabitha. Thank you, Jesse. I didn't, sorry, I didn't catch your last name on the way, and we were doing the email thing, and I didn't actually <laughs> pay close attention. Now, maybe you could tell us uh, who you are, uh, a little bit about the Digital Media Studies program, and also, uh, speaking of times of year, uh, it is, of course, that time of the season where people start thinking about ghosts and goblins Indeed. and pumpkins. I can't remember what the name of that thing is called, but nonetheless, <laughs> there's some kind of event happening, and you're doing a very interactive Uh, new media experience. Uh, Tell us about what you're up to. My name is Tabitha Orange. I am with the Digital Media Studies program at Vancouver Island University. This is my last semester. We get a broad range of experience in digital media such as movies, audio, website production, and uh, social media. So what my group and I are doing, there's a group of us four who have put on an Nanaimo QR code ghost hunt. What that is, is a social interactive game that all of Nanaimo and people who are coming through Nanaimo can participate in. Now, QR codes are those those <laughs> funny looking Bar things. Barcodes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. extra thing that's now on everything that I buy and see and everywhere that I look uh, that it, it, I don't understand and I refuse to uh, become a modern uh, user of my cell phone. But <laughs> apparently people can do this. Maybe this is the time for me to, to cross that barrier and uh, maybe it's time for our listeners to engage in them as well. Uh, tell us about these QR codes and uh, and what they mean and where they are at. Sure. The QR codes are, as you said, a a barcode um, that displays information such as URLs or text or pictures that people can upload into a QR code generator. And there's lots of free websites on uh, the internet that you can generate a QR code with. These... QR code. You could, yes, indeed. So I could just get a QR code, put it places, and when people snap on the QR code, it could say uh, phone and pledge to CHLY 101.7 FM by dialing 1-855-740-1017? Absolutely. All right. I'm nice making plug. One. I'm making <laughs> one. Okay. Expect to see that QR code around the city soon. But for now, you do have a few of these QR codes that you have created yourself. And uh, yeah, tell us more. Right. Well, they're posted in 11 locations, mostly in the downtown area of Nanaimo. Some of them are a very close proximity of each other. What they do when you scan the QR code with an app on your phone is it will give you a description of the types of hauntings that have happened in that area, as well as the clues to the next location. We try to make it as easy as possible without actually giving away the location. So there is a little bit of research that you might have to do on the internet. There are some little clue words within the clue itself and you might have to get a little bit resourceful with your media. And uh, so you guys have done a little bit of work. Now, you've, you've combined uh, the QR code technology, uh, the modern, uh, I guess, uh, three-dimensional uh, digital information transferring um, meme, I guess you'd call this thing. Is it a meme? Or would you use that language? Uh, Symbol, I guess, for the, you know, right. yeah. for, for, our, our, for our purposes. Uh, but you've also combined it with historical content. And uh, mm-hmm. you've, you've done a little bit of research and you've come up with uh, what are some of the legends of, of Nanaimo? And maybe, uh, have you got some highlights from that? Like what, when you were doing your um, your your research, uh, aside from finding out, uh, of course, uh, that, um, you know, all of the interesting uh, ghost stories that you've got in the QR codes, was there anything else that kind of just jumped out at you and you thought, whoa, that's, that, that's pretty cool. I'm glad that I sort of embarked down this trail. During the research process, there have been 
places that I've contacted that unfortunately didn't reply back, and I'm hoping that we can get them on board for next year. Well, this is a call. Shall we call them out right now? So we sh- no, shall we shame no. them on the radio? Okay, <laughs> no. well, that was your choice. Okay. <laughs> Nothing that, of that. that. Very nice, very nice. Well, <laughs> and we're speaking again with Tabitha Orange, who has created, along with her classmates, a series of QR codes and put them throughout the downtown area. Now, I just cut in and I was asking you about <laughs> things that uh, really stuck out for you and you didn't get all of the uh, uh, responses that you needed. Tell us why that was unfortunate for you. Uh, It was unfortunate for us personally because what was interesting was that we actually came up with 13 possible locations, which is an interesting and ominous number (laughs) for Halloween. So we had to get a little bit creative when we didn't hear from these different locations. So we've actually added a couple that we heard about through interacting with different people when we were posting our posters around VIU and around the town. So they're not all located in businesses. There are some that are actually located in just general public areas. The downtown area is the oldest in Nanaimo. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of history and a lot of reports about different types of hauntings. We have some reports that, when we looked up on the Internet, that people have been shot in different areas. People had been killed for different other reasons. This was a huge mining town at one time. And, Quite a bit uh, of strife and controversy in the in the uh, in the legends of Nanaimo, hey? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, one location that we have uh, is one of the oldest wooden structures in all of Northern America. So that's a clue to one of the locations. But keep on track. <laughs> and uh, no we cheating. can't give any more out. <laughs> no, no coming down to the studio to beg us for the clues <laughs> that I have uh, managed to have a look at. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a, a lot of great legends of the Nanaimo, and, uh, but also in this l- event that's going on right now because uh, you guys have put together a bit of a cool little treasure hunt here, mm-hmm. and, uh, and this uh, is something that people can get more information on where. We have a Facebook page. You can search for Nanaimo QR and you will come up with our page. Right now we have 41 people who are liking our page. But concerning our stats that I checked on before I came to the radio station, we are reaching 339 people. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, 339 ghost hunters cruising around the downtown <laughs> and uh, using their uh, digital devices to pick up the symbols uh, that will lead them from place to place, giving clue to clue, uh, and of course imparting legendary tales all along the way. Mm-hmm, exactly. Very cool. Well, v- thank you so much for coming in today. D- is there any uh, shout outs that you want to do now that you're on the air? I want to give a shout out to my teammates, Taylor Haywood, Akina Murakami, and uh, Chapeau Radatladi. Very cool. Well, thanks so much again for coming in today, Tabitha. The digital media studies students uh, have lined the entire town with all kinds of secret symbols uh, that you're going to have to use your encoder decoder uh, in your cell phone to discover all the legends and tales uh, throughout the city. Uh, Thanks so much again for coming in.